Hey everyone, and welcome to Minis for Pennies. This week is a special episode, because instead of doing my usual projects, I was challenged by a fellow crafter named Earthman Brick. And he writes, Cheers Andy, under the current restrictions, I can't get to certain stores. Therefore my challenge is crafting something using free resources. Let me know if you'd like to try it. Earthman Brick. Earthman knows too well that free is my magic word. So to meet the challenge, I dug around in various trash cans and dove into a few dumpsters and made two projects from the totally free junk that I found. Since Earthman likes science fiction minis and terrain so much, in honor of his challenge, my first project will be a robotic battlefield turret. Since this is an all trash build, I'm making the base also, so I'm using a Pringles potato chip lid with a disc of cardboard stuffed inside. This makes a perfect 3 inch base. For the base of the turret, I'm going to start with an ordinary bottle cap that is about 5 centimeters wide, and then I want to give it some armor plates. So I cut a ring of plastic from a white plastic bottle and then trimmed the strip that I cut into three pieces for armor spaced around the ridge side of the bottle. Next I made three stabilizers to go around the ring out of disposable razor blade handles. I cut those about two centimeters long and glued them in a triangle around the cap in the spaces between the armor plates. Next I made a round plate of armor for the top of the cap from an old microwave bowl. I cut it into panels and punched some holes to break up the smooth surface and to make a place for decorations later. That gets glued down and now it's time for rivets. I use my 1 8 inch and 16 inch hole punches to make rivets for the armor panels on the sides and on the top and also a single bolt for each of the stabilizers. Then I added small tubes from a cotton swab stick where the stabilizers met the cap to cover the gaps there. And to hold the turret, I snipped three cylinders from a drinking straw and placed them in the middle of the turret base. To decorate the armor and the gaps, I added some punch outs as panels and some paper clip wires that extended from the center of the turret to the base. Also some pipes were made from swab stick. For the turret, I took a soda bottle cap and cut a piece of straw to connect another cap, leaving a gap big enough for the weapons to fit. For the weapons, I took the leftover handles from the disposable razors and cut them into 4 cm long rectangles. I used some textured plastic from a chocolate bunny container to cover the gaps and then attach two barrels made from the cotton swab sticks. To cover up the back gap, I snipped off the joint that held the razor head and glued it to the back. When that was done, I started filling the bottle cap with random bits to simulate machinery. Chunks of straw, toothpick pieces, plastic from the razors, a thumbtack, some wire tie. Next, I cut a cotton swab into a T-shape to make an antenna holder and I stuck a toothpick in the antenna and wrapped the holder with a wire tie and then glued that to the center post. To finish the top cap, I added a thumbtack and a staple and then decorated it with a few hole punch panels. And then I also added a sensor to the side by snipping the angled head off of one of the razors and glued it on. I also put a lintel on the front to be a lens. Then I attach the guns underneath the cap. And that means everything is ready, so the base gets covered in PVA glue for some sand and gravel, and then a base coat of Mod Podge and primer and paint. And here's my finished turret ready for the battlefield, perfect for a game of Grimdark Futures. You could also skip the turret base if you want and just put it on a flying base instead. So that'll make a hovering drone or maybe a droid for a Star Wars game, but I'm going to keep it on the turret. 
cost on this one, bottle caps, plastic containers, office supplies, it's all free. Maybe a penny for art supplies, but just barely. You could probably do enough for all battlefields worth for less than a nickel. Okay, for the second project I was inspired by the Tesla coil from the Command & Conquer games. It's basically a big lightning cannon, which I think fits in perfectly with steampunk. So to make this one, I started with the same Pringles lid and cardboard base, and I added a lid from the little bottle of Simply Orange Juice, the green one. On top of that, I added an empty K-cup from my coffee maker. And I had quite a few bits of floss pick left over from making robot legs, so I snipped those down to make buttresses for the main tower. For the main coil, I added the round lid of an applesauce pouch to the top of the K-cup. For the side coil, I pulled the plug from a cheap marker, and I attached it with an angled piece of drinking straw to the K-cup. To make the side coil, I took the dispenser cap from one of my super glue tubes and attached a 10 millimeter bead to the tip. Then I drilled a hole at the base of the funnel and wrapped a wire in a coil all the way up to the bead. Then that was all glued to the marker plug. To decorate the sides, I took the tops off of three plastic chest pawns and glued those around. For the main coil, I snipped the head off of a plastic bishop and stuck a glass marble on his top. Then that shaft got wrapped in a wire tie. That was placed on top of the applesauce cap. I then glued some super glue caps around the base to act as batteries. And then I added big rivets around the body of the tower and the applesauce cap using my favorite split peas. When everything was on, I decorated with hole punch rivets all over. To make the discharge effect, I cut two lengths of wire about five inches long and bent them into jagged shapes. Then I loosely twisted them together and glued them to the ends of the coils. Then it was time to flock the base with sand, Mod Podge, Prime, and paint. And here is the finished Tesla turret. You could use this as a weapon like I am, or as a force field generator, or a power source, a decoration in a monster lab, whatever you like. Again, trash is free, scrounging is free, maybe a penny for art supplies, so if you wanted to fill up a battlefield or a dungeon with these or similar things, you could probably be paying close to nothing. There you go, Earthman Brick. What do you think? Did I pass the challenge? I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. It was a lot of fun to stretch the imagination and take on the challenge. And of course, you know I love the price tag on these. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you enjoy playing games without spending all your money, hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you next week with more minis for pennies.